Hello and congratulations on your decision to enroll in your upcoming workshop, Inclusive Leadership. My name is Scott Horton and I'm a diversity and inclusion consultant. You've probably attended at least one diversity workshop in your career, right? So let's reinforce a few concepts that you might have learned in those classes, but that we'll definitely be focusing on in inclusive leadership. And those are diversity, inclusion, and inclusive leadership. So diversity, in its simplest form, its people, and all of the massive variety of differences that we bring with us every day when we come to work. It's our background, our culture, our point of view, the way we think. It's literally hundreds, probably thousands of differences that make us unique and make us who we are. Inclusion is the behaviors that we exhibit to our colleagues and to our teammates and team members and people we lead that displays that we welcome them, we respect them, we value their point of view, and even more than that, how we leverage those differences to the benefit of the business. Inclusive leadership begins with self-knowledge and the ability to display some really vital leadership characteristics of empathy, fairness, listening, and authentic feedback. The business reasons why we're focusing on this might be apparent to you, but I'd like to spell them out one at a time, at least four of them. The first one is such an important one, it's our customers. They are changing in the United States at such a rapid pace that if we don't prepare our workforce and our workplace to serve those customers, we'll be left in the dust. And the second big business theme that makes our work so important, the age demographics in the U.S. are shifting with a really large number of baby boomers retiring in big numbers over the next 10, 15 years. And this massive group of millennials coming into the workforce in big numbers. Millennials are those workers who are now in their 20s and 30s. And we know from lots of research that that population expects a workplace that embraces diversity and inclusion. The third component of the business case for diversity and inclusion is creativity and innovation. And the research on this topic is conclusive across multiple university studies. It's been determined that well-managed, diverse teams consistently outperform poorly managed and non-diverse teams. Let's end with a big one, and that's the full utilization of our talent. So if we're doing anything on a conscious or unconscious basis that is causing someone not to feel included, we really should take it on ourselves to develop the awareness and the skills and the ability to be able to remove those barriers. And we want you to stay connected and be in the dialogue about inclusive leadership and about unconscious bias. We'll see you at the workshop.